Yo, what up guys? Mike here, and let's talk about some more dumb shit. So, I hear this very commonly, uh, this notion that if you are going after listed properties, meaning properties listed on the MLS, that you should filter your search criteria to look for properties that have been on market for a long amount of time. So, it could be 90 days, 120 days. And the supposed methodology or you know thought process here is that if a seller has not sold their house, you know, they want to sell, they haven't sold it in, let's say, three months or six months, they're going to be more motivated and more open to taking a lower offer. Now, there is some credence that that could be true in certain situations, but what that also means is that that person might not just be, they just might not be motivated. And so that's why that advice goes under our dumb as fuck playlist. Instead, you can do that, sure, but you do not want to limit yourself to only that, right? Because you also want to be looking at properties that have signs of distress. And so when something comes onto the market, and let's say it's not even eligible for a traditional loan, maybe it's got fire damage, maybe there's an issue with mold or something like that, and the property is really jacked up, that property is not going to last, or if it's there at a really good price, that property is not going to last for 30 days, 60 days, that property is going to be gone maybe in the same week. And so remember, as wholesalers, your job is not just to um, you know, grab these deals. It's not like you're the only one looking at them, but a part of it is grabbing them with speed, is getting the control. And so if you're only looking at things that are way out there, it doesn't make sense. You're cutting yourself off from properties that have a lot of potential. You know, other investors, the reason why this business is lucrative is because, you know, a lot of cash buyers, for example, that's not all they do. You know, any if someone's doing this full-time or rehab or looking at properties every day, sure, they could get these deals themselves. They're open, right? Anyone can find them. I've done deals where any one of you could have found them. But the point I'm making here is that if it's a deal, it's going to go fast. And so your job is not ne just negotiating prices and things like that. Your job is to be faster than everyone else, basically to find it first. And once you get the control, then when you go out to your buyers and show them, you can say, look, this is a really good deal. They say, well, wasn't it on market? You say, I'm the only one who has a contract. I'm the only one who can sell it. As a matter of fact, if I'm either going to assign it to you as assign it to a buyer now or I'm going to close on it. So it's not going back on the market, man. So you could either take it now as an assignment, get it on the cheap, or I could close on it, you know, fix it up myself, rehab it myself. Or if I close on it and someone wants to buy it after that, price is going to be higher because I'm going to have paid, you know, my closing costs and all those uh, fees. So if you hear that advice that you should only do on market deals over a certain amount of time. The logic is flawed. Um, it's not necessarily flawed. Like that can be true in some instances. So I'm not saying not to do it, but it's not, that's not the only thing that you should be looking for. Feel free to, again, search for those signs of distress. All right. So that was my quick little tip for the day. Hope that helps. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.